Pioneer Congregational UCC. We're glad you could join us wherever you are. I'm Bald Von Hune. I've been worshiping with this church for about a year, and I'm the lay preacher for this Sunday. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, and I've been told it's also Valentine's Day. And 2021 is shaping up to be another challenging year, both in our communities and across the country. And there's no better place to be at a time like this than together in worship. So thank you for being with us. Please join me in the call to worship. Lord, the world around us is noisy. Please help us to tune that noise out for a little while. Grant us a moment of peace, of calmness, so that without distraction we can keep our ears open to hear your word, and our eyes open to see your ways, and our hearts open to receive and share your love. Amen. First reading, Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead.
Second reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Amen. The lectionary reading that caught my eye this week was this passage from Corinthians. The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. In this passage, the God of this world is a god with a lowercase g, sometimes translated as the god of this age, understood to be an embodiment of all our earthly, self-centered preoccupations that distract us from the gospel. And it makes me think, how are we each being blinded by the god of this world? What are all the ways in which all our worldly and material devotions are holding us back from fully embracing Christ's commandments. 
what false gods are we worshiping that we don't realize? Sometimes it seems to me like this whole country has a problem with idolatry. Last weekend was arguably the biggest American holiday on the calendar, Super Bowl Sunday. And we got a pretty good look at all the things that American society admires or covets. The popularity of the athletes, the wealth of the team owners, frankly the physique of the cheerleaders, the false promises of happiness made by each advertisement, and the intense patriotism that sometimes starts to look like flag worship. Of course, none of us want to think of ourselves as idolaters. And to be fair, most of us don't give ourselves completely to the pursuit of wealth or status or other worldly aspirations. For many of us, it seems like what we think we want in this life is comfort, maybe stability, a decent home, financial security, good health care, good reason, and the peace of mind that all of these things bring, especially in this tumultuous period in our nation's history. But if we spend too much of our lives trying to make ourselves comfortable, I think the same God of this world is still distracting us from Christ's commandments. For me, the God of this world is basically that voice that tells me to reach for pocket change when I meet a homeless person on the street. Because giving them a $20 bill would just be financially irresponsible. And it's something I struggle with. I'm in the same situation as a lot of people my age, a year and a half out of college, spending a lot of time and energy trying to advance my career, save enough for a comfortable future, while still enjoying life in the present, and so on and so forth. But I have to pause and think. Here I am, living in the wealthiest state, in the wealthiest country in history, with health insurance, no real question of having food or shelter. So why am I so worried about my own situation when I'm surrounded by poverty, and by homelessness and drug addiction, and countless other forms of suffering? And if I'm truly a Christian, why am I spending my life and my resources trying in vain to safeguard my own physical and material comfort? That's a slap in God's face. And what I keep coming back to is that the way Christ tells us to live and the things he tells us to prioritize are truly radical compared to how secular society expects us to live our lives. There's that account that shows up in several different Gospels when a rich man asked Jesus what he still needed to do to inherit eternal life, having already followed all the other commandments. Jesus did not respond, make a comfortable living, worship on Sundays, give enough to charity to soothe your troubled conscience. Instead, he basically responded, give all your material wealth where it is needed and follow me. Forgo the worldly comforts that you have spent your whole life accumulating and live with faith that God will take care of you. And the rich man couldn't bear the thought of that. And it seems like neither can we. Maybe the God of this world has blinded us to the possibility. Now, there is no question that we all work hard for our livelihoods. And I think we see our labor embodied in many worldly things, our material possessions, our job titles, our visibility within our communities, and the perceived social status that all of these things impart to us. And it's easy for these to become the objects of our devotion. But I've been lucky to have met people wherever I have lived, and especially here, who have used their material advantages to accomplish God's work in the world. People who take whatever time and resources and positions they have been blessed with and worked hard for, and devote those to causes of justice and peace and compassion. And I pray that we can all find ways to do the same, keeping our eye on the gospel, unblinded by any false god of this world. Amen.
Would you please join me in a moment of silent prayer? Lord, we pray from a time of upheaval and uncertainty in our communities and across the world. We have faced the departure of a beloved pastor to retirement and the loss of friends and family to all kinds of physical ailments. Our lives have been upended by the pandemic. Our optimism for our country has been shaken by violence. We look ahead into this year with little idea of what it will bring. Help us to remember, as we are being tested, that your purposes are beyond our comprehension and to deepen our gratitude for all the blessings we take for granted. We ask that you be with those who are suffering and that you bring them comfort and peace and that you empower us to do the same. Many of us are grieving the deaths of beloved community members. Help us to accept that all our days on this earth are numbered and precious and keep us from wasting any of them. We thank you for giving us challenging but clear instructions for use in our daily lives. Instructions to act with love, compassion, and forgiveness, which transcend all our human designs and worldly institutions. Help us to keep centered in our minds the words of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. These are the announcements for February 14th. In our announcements today, we want to express our thanks to Balt von Yoon for his ministry in word. We truly appreciate all those who have been filling our pulpit during this difficult time of transition. A reminder that we have fellowship hour each Sunday at 1130 a.m. via Zoom. You should have received the link in the weekly email. If you did not receive the link or would like to be invited, please write to, to the email you see on your screen, jimjordan at pioneerucc.org. Next Sunday, February 21st, we will enjoy the ministry of Rev. Christine Piper Foote, who was with us last on January 10th. And then on February 28th, Randy Treisenberg will be our speaker. And finally, we would thank you for your faithful support of Pioneer Church during this difficult time. The daily ministries of the church go on, and we thank you for your continuing support in tithes and offerings. Thank you.
Came through powers your grace conferred, ours to use for home and kindred, and to spread the gospel word. Open wide our hands in sharing as we heed Christ's ageless call. Two thousand years ago, Christ taught his disciples the ways of God. And throughout each of those next two thousand years, countless of his followers have lived and labored and died so that we, today, could receive his teachings. May we live our lives so that none of their sacrifice was in vain. Amen. <laughs>